Hi, welcome to the pursuit of truth. Um, this morning, uh, and I think uh, actually it was yesterday. Oh, it's still the twenty seventh, by the way, of April. Um, they had a story. Um, they were reporting how the Russians were having this news conference, and they didn't really play very much of it. It wasn't unless I didn't see it, but it wasn't. You know, like if there's a new conference by Donald Trump, or you know, when Theresa May wants to bomb someone, you know. The, they broadcast the whole thing live. It was just to clip it. But then that's the way it is, isn't it? <laughs> they always give time to their friends, not their enemies, or their so-called enemies. So they were, they had this child, an 11-year-old boy, Hassan Diab, and he's actually featured in the famous video that they always show of of, um, of kids getting thrown with water on them that appear to be fine and being given inhalers. Um, and this boy claims that um, he was tricked into this, that they were offered food uh, and they were told to go down into the basement. And um, So he's alleging that it was a staged event, which is what Russia said from the beginning. And I'm hoping, <laughs> and I don't know if this is bad to say this, but I'm hoping that they find out that it is a staged event and there's some way they can prove it, you know, so that we would all actually acknowledge it. And then it'd be interesting to see what, how America and the UK and France answer that for the fact that they drop bombs. I'm sure they just, they would say, well, it didn't really matter the places that we dropped bombs on. We had intelligence that they had nerve agent uh, production there, or blah 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 blah. But it, it, um, I'm, I'm sure this story is going to end, and it won't. But the thing is, is because the way that Russia, North Korea, China, you know how they're painted in 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 how can I say? I was going to say on TV, but it's not just TV. It's is, is generally, and I don't know who to blame for why, if you ask me my perceptions of Russians, of Chinese, of North Koreans, I guess it's the news. I would give you very negative answers, wouldn't I? Whereas, how many have I actually met? I'm not sure, actually, because uh, there's a lot of people from USSR I've met. Um, and they were all, you know, the only thing I noticed is that they were, they were um, hard working and strict and strong. But I wouldn't say that they were liars or deceitful or more corrupt than, than an English person. Um, so we have our perceptions, and the problem is with those perceptions, is a bit like the, um, the nursery rhyme, um, The Boy Who Cried Wolf. It's a nursery rhyme or story, whatever you want to call it. Because um, the whole idea of that is that because he cried, cried wolf three times then when it really happens no one believes him obviously he cried wolf twice and the third time no one believes him because you know he's lied so many times so that's the same where it is if, if in the media or the news or whoever it is that is putting this out puts out negative things about these people then you won't believe them and we know that and we know that we do have most of us in the West have a negative view of certain countries and certain leaders which we've never met and we don't really see their broadcasts in, in entirety only whenever they want to pick certain bits so even like I was saying before you know like if I found the truth would anyone believe me? No they wouldn't because who am I? and this is the problem I'm, I'm thinking even though they've got this child obviously my own brain thought oh wow they're with the Russians maybe he's been paid maybe he's just saying that I can't prove it either way really can I? He could be um, lying, or he could be telling the truth. It depends which, it's a bit like subtle infinities arguing about, you know, labelling yourself or falling into a certain box. Some people will fall into the box of, yes, um, Russia has paid this boy or coerced this boy into making this statement and he's lying and it did really happen. And then uh, another group will fall into the, to the opposite of that. I don't know, like the, the fact that someone who is part of it is saying that it didn't happen. Um, is that enough? It, I mean, the thing is, it could be that, you know, like with the moon landing hoax story that, that, uh, that some people believe that America went up 
but that the photographs and the video was shot separately because they were worried that just in case you know they couldn't get their quality or whatever or it couldn't happen that they could stage it there so the stuff we see is is not actual of the event so is it possible that that's also as well that they they knew this event was going to take place and they had people ready for the cameras so that they could film them that you know weren't too too you know like dying in front of cameras because no news organization is going to broadcast people gasping or dying and stuff like that they have to have something that's a little bit sanitized isn't it like people are just going water chucked over them <laughs> i mean i must admit when i first saw those pictures i mean they didn't really convince me because i couldn't see anyone struggling really and all i saw was people getting wet but it was enough for bombs to be dropped so yeah well i guess we'll see what happens with that but i'm sure that um, well, because the, the Russians took the child and their delegation to the OPCW, the um, people looking into the, the alleged nerve agent attack in Syria. But the French, Americans, British didn't want to attend because they thought that Russia was, was being, you know, was, was not being proper. <laughs> but maybe it's just because they don't like being labelled in this way and they want to prove something and they've got a bit of proof. It's always interesting when someone doesn't want to listen. Um, and the other thing I wanted to talk oh, so also the, the Russians were claiming it was the White Helmets uh, who did this, who are a Syrian NGO organization, um, who were funded, strangely, by the West. Yes. <laughs> so there's definitely motive then. I know I've seen a video of uh, White Helmets, I don't know if it's true or not on YouTube, of them. Um, uh, taking a man out of a hole, I don't know whether he was really injured or not, or whether that was all staged just to do like, um, what do they call it, when everyone stands still. I've forgotten the name now of uh, that craze that was going around. So, but I know there is allegations against them that they do stage things, and uh, obviously it would make sense to have, you know, like if you were in the West and you wanted to take over a country, it makes sense to have your own people um, influencing things. Not that much of a stretch of imagination, but of course those people who believe that this country or the country they're in can do no wrong, well, they won't even consider that thought. So the other thing I want to get into is religion. Um, I'm a Muslim. Um, I'm not as great a follower as I used to be. But when I was listening to Subtle Infinity and a few other people, they were questioning, you know, whether you know, like, all these different conspiracies, all these different ways of controlling us and they often question religion and there's a lot as whether well, within flat earth also there's two camps there's the ones that believe in religion and the ones that don't um obviously the ones that believe will cite parts of the bible and to a lesser degree parts of the quran where it suggests that the earth is flat but um so a lot of people suggest that uh, and i don't know whether this well, the thing is, it is all in con interconnected, isn't it? But it might not necessarily be in the sense I'm thinking that a lot of the power control came from the Catholic side of the Christian church. Now I'm getting into this Muslim versus Christian, isn't it? <laughs> getting into a different camp. Well, what I'm trying to say is maybe there may have been fractions within that that came from the Roman side. Um, who, you know, because that's what I believe with the St. Paul's side of things, that he hijacked Christianity, um, made up this bit about the Gentiles and um, meeting Jesus so that he could then, you know, convert everyone, despite Jesus never doing it in his lifetime. He only was interested in the lost sheep of Israel, the Twelve, who were all Jewish. So... Whether it comes from there, it, it might be that religion has been hijacked in the sense that maybe God does exist and all these things are true, but the, the application of it has been hijacked by certain individuals. And especially we do know that during the colonization days of from the West to Africa and other countries, 
a lot of them would take a priest, a Catholic priest, or I assume a Catholic priest, a priest of some sort, to spread the word. And I did often wonder why were they so interested in spreading the word, because maybe they were more religious back then, or maybe it's also because they know then they can control people, because they can warn people, if you don't be good, if you don't follow me, then you're going to go to hell, etc., etc. So I don't know whether we can divorce the two things. The, we do know that religion has an aspect of power, control over it, but is it that it's just been misused? It's, it's, it's a very, I know it's controversial because some people would suggest my even thinking about this is blasphemy. I don't think it's blasphemy. I think it's important always to question everything. I can't be seen to be questioning government and people and not question myself and my views and my religion that I follow. What if, how do I prove that it exists when religion itself is belief, isn't it? That's, that's what a lot of people say that this book was written, who really wrote it? You know, there, there would be those people who suggested it was written by men and that it was all done to control the populace. And we do know religion has a very strong uh, control, not, maybe not so much now, it's starting to dwindle, but um, there is obviously you know, a huge power that there is in, in, in religion. I guess the thing is, I can't possibly, but then that's with everything, I, I can only go on what I believe. I think that's all I can do, but it is, it's an interesting one where it challenges something that I believe in. I believe there is God, and I, I believe in the Islamic faith. And I guess I, I, I'm starting to question now because I'm seeing these YouTube videos, but that's just from the aspect of that I need to make sure that I'm not following something that you know, is, is another rabbit hole that is, is a falsehood that's been made up just to keep us a certain way. But the only thing I can say that is different from all these things is the benefit that there is in religion. That's the thing that keeps me onto it, is that it's full of doing good. It's the opposite of what all these false flags and what all this government control and Illuminati and all that kind of stuff is about, which is all about denying us our lives. Whereas within religious texts, whether it's the Bible, the Quran, or whichever. A lot of it is about doing good to one another, is about our freedom. You know, often I quote that God, if you believe in God, that God gave us the free reign, you know. A lot of what's in there is our morality, is, is doing good, is, is, is looking after each other, is, is looking after the poor, all the things that we don't do and yet there's more religious people than non-religious people on this planet, and yet if we actually followed all those teachings, I think this world would be a better place rather than pretending that we do. So I think that's what keeps me believing that God does exist, is the, is the fact that the words within it are ones that are, if followed, give us a, a better life. I'm sure there's arguments around that. I'm sure people who are listening to this will be screaming at me now saying, well, what about this, what about that? And I know there's a lot of people that don't really understand religion and will say things, you know, obviously being a Muslim convert, I know that because I've witnessed people's ignorance and people saying things with, with passion without it ever being true. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's enough something to, to think on. I'm sure I will go through it more. But I guess as, as I go through all these different things, the thing I'm realizing is that we have to question everything. And at the end of it, we may not absolutely know what is the truth because these things, well, it's difficult to n know all these things. I don't know if that's because the way we are or the way we've been brought up or taught.